All right, Miss Aurora is back. Secured entrepreneurs, you all know this is about the time of the day when the sun likes to come in and kiss a tenderoni. <laughs> okay, in this video, we have got to get into the Hermes heir who states that he has mysteriously lost $13 billion. He actually claims that the loss is due to the mismanagement of his funds by his wealth manager. He actually had three lawsuits against his wealth manager, stating that it was the mismanagement of the wealth manager that has caused him to lose this $13 billion. However, a judge in a Swiss court ruled that, no, sir, this is not the fault of your wealth manager. I want to get into what happened to the Hermes heir who lost this $13 billion. I want to hear what the secured entrepreneurs have to say about what happened to this money that nobody knows where it is today. And I'm going to let all of the secured entrepreneurs know exactly what it is that you need to do to avoid ever having a situation like this. Can we do it? All right. So for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you build six and seven figure tax free businesses. You heard that right. Stick around because we all know that this is the secured entrepreneur movement. entrepreneurs here it is Hermes heirs 13 billion fortune has seemingly vanished after he vowed to award huge chunk to his gardener let's talk about how suspicious that is already the multi-billion dollar fortune belonging to the reclusive Hermes heir was seemingly has seemingly vanished months after he promised to donate a large chunk of his colossal inheritance to his gardener. Nicholas Pooch, 81, the largest individual shareholder of the French fashion house, was told by a Swiss court on July 12th that his wealth manager, Eric Freeman, cannot be held responsible for the missing 13 billion fortune after he was entrusted with keeping track of the enormous treasure chest, Bloomberg reported. The decision was handed down after Pusha's lawyers claimed that their client no longer owned about 6 million shares of Hermes stock, which made up the majority of his massive fortune. The court also found no evidence was presented that his financial advisor mismanaged any of his wealth and said, the so-called black sheep of the wealthy family, Poosh, was not the victim of a gigantic fraud over 24 years, during which time at least some of the stock was sold. The Swiss court ruled that Poosh's blind trust in Freeman, basically he trusted him blindly, right? Who had complete control over his bank account does not indicate that the wealth manager duped his client according to Bloomberg. The court's final ruling was that Pooch willingly turned over management of his wealth to Freeman, whom he hired in 1998, Bloomberg reported. Pooch ended Freeman's control over his vast wealth in October 2022 and set out to take stock of his fortune and organize his succession according to the Swiss court. A year later, the fashion house heir filed three cases against Freeman the first alleging the wealth manager withheld information and wouldn't and couldn't return the Hermes shares, according to the outlet. The other two cases are related to the management of his foundation, loans, and I was wondering, you know, why would he need loans? I, you know, I was wondering about that. And other investments he claimed Freeman oversaw. The heir's missing fortune is part of the fallout from the Louis Vuitton owner Bernard Bernard Arnault's attempt to take over Hermes with Pusha's help in the early 2010s. Now, how many of the secured entrepreneurs know that Bernard Arnault, they say, is worth $187 billion, 
and he has recently lost 20 billion. He has recently lost 20 billion dollars, but they say he is worth 187 billion. So just imagine that. Just imagine that. You, you know, you're almost you, 187 billion, you lose 20 billion. Are you upset about it? Are you butt hurt about it? <laughs> Are you distraught? Do you want to fight somebody? Do you want to send three double men pinches to somebody's door? I don't know. Comment below. Secure entrepreneurs, let Mr. Romer know. You know, how do you feel about that? 187 billion, but you lose 20 billion. How affected are you? Do you do you care that much? Are you gonna eat an ice cream sandwich and call it a day of business? You gonna take a few laps in your swimming pool, pet your cat, feed a bird? What are you gonna do? Huh. The attempted hostile takeover left Pooch a family outcast for his alleged involvement in helping Arnault steadily rack up a stake in the company. It resulted in Arnault unwinding his 23% holding in the company and Pooch being pushed out of the Hermes supervisory board, according to Bloomberg. He resigned because he felt, he resigned because he has felt for several years beleaguered by members of his family who have attacked him on several fronts, not only regarding LVMH, stated a spokesperson for Pooch at the time. The whereabouts of his stock from the fallout remain a mystery. Interesting, isn't it? Pooch was said to have owned a 5.7% stake in Hermes part of the more than two thirds of the luxury goods maker still owned by the founding family. Now this is what we're talking about secured entrepreneurs, legacy wealth, legacy wealth. Th this brand is still owned by the founding family. And I think, I think that Poosh himself is fifth generation. And I think they're gonna tell us here in the article, he's fifth generation and he's 81 years old. He's childless, but check, but here's the part. Here's the part. Okay. The company is valued at 220 billion. And then I just say that Bernard Arnault, they say is worth 187 billion. They say this company is worth 220 billion. Very interesting. Here we go. The news of the missing fortune comes after Poosh, a reportedly childless recluse. Now I don't have any problem with him being childless or, or reclusive. Okay. I really don't. Living in Switzerland hired a formidable legal team last year to formalize the gardener's adoption. Now, when I read this, I was like, adoption? Now, is this a child? Is this a minor? Um, or are they saying adoption to, you know, his trust? But, you know, you know, that wasn't clear to me. And revise his estate arrangements. So that they didn't make that clear as to as to what type of adoption they were referring to there. OK, not much is known about the heirs ties to the unidentified gardener and handyman. He's the gardener and handyman. So he's old enough to be the gardener and handyman. So, boy, I wish they would have given some clarity on that uh, adoption or how long he has worked for the fifth generation descendant of Hermes founder, Thierry Hermes. Boy, Thierry Hermes left a legacy that is unmatched. I mean, how many of the secured entrepreneurs desire to have a legacy like this? I mean, it's just unreal. This unorthodox move to pass on his immense wealth and real estate properties. Who is this gardener and how good of a handyman could he possibly be to inherit to what, who was supposed to inherit all of this man's wealth and real estate. Okay. This unorthodox move to pass on his immense wealth and real estate properties to his gardener has sparked intense speculation okay here we go here we go the gardener 
is reportedly married to a Spanish woman with two children and would have inherited a significant portion of Pooch's fortune, including substantial properties in Marrakesh, Morocco, and Montreux, Switzerland, valued at $5.9 million. Now, that's actually not a lot. Like, I don't know. Okay, the, the properties... So I'm, I'm guessing the properties between Morocco and Switzerland are, are valued at 5.9 million. Okay, so that's not really a lot. I mean, for a gardener, it would be. For a gardener, that would be. But as I'm saying, first he's unidentified. Now, now he's reportedly married to a Spanish woman. How, how, did, how did they find out about this Spanish woman and her two children or their two children? I don't know. I don't know. The whole thing, I want to know what the secured entrepreneurs think. Because I need to get into how it is this is not going to happen to any one of us. All right, now, Secured Entrepreneurs, we read it. What say you? Comment below. What do you think the judge saw in the financial documents that led to the ruling? Okay, the wealth manager is not responsible for this $13 billion getting off. Okay, now I wish I had the case. I wish we had more more information about the transactions that the judge saw that that created the ruling okay because we all know you see your statements we know where the money is going so is it that this man had permission to to to, to make certain investments and the, and the investments were, were were crappy i mean you know we need more information there but but in any event clearly mr push is saying that there was some situations that occurred that he was not in agreement with and, you know, we read about the stocks and, and he wasn't in agreement with that. He can't get it back. What's going on? But the judge said, hey, look, you 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 trusted this man. You signed you signed some documents. OK, what did Mr. Rory tell you about the Wendy Williams situation? She had documents signed with Wells Fargo Bank that they could do what they needed to do if it was found that she at any time became, you know, mentally incapacitated. You know, th there were certain, there were certain language put in the documents that Wendy Williams signed that allowed Wells Fargo to do what they did. Okay. So could it be that some things that Mr. Pooch signed agreeing to, and then these things jumped off. Okay. No, we're not going to blame the wealth manager because look here, you, you signed your name here. Okay. So I want to get into about five or six things right now that are important for the secured entrepreneurs to do like today, because we're all legacy builders here. We, 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 we are building tax-free wealth here all over the world. All right. So it is going to be important as to how it is we manage our currency at whatever financial institution that we are choosing to align our currency with. <laughs> okay. So the first thing, that Miss Aurora would tell the secured entrepreneurs is that you must thoroughly vet an advisor. If it is that you need to hire an advisor or you want to hire an advisor or you are required to have an advisor for whatever the reason, you have got to heavily vet this advisor. You have got to get into the advisor's history. Okay, what, what, where was this person last? Do you have any credentials? that let me know that you are highly qualified to handle my funds. Tell me the wins that you have gotten for your clients, okay? Maybe I need a criminal history. Maybe I need to know what the heaven, you know, maybe I need to get a, a, a private investigator and, and search you out. Like some people do this. I, you, I mean, I know that most of the secured entrepreneurs know <laughs> that there's gonna be a lot of people who will hire private investigators to search a person out on this level when it comes to their funds. Okay. They're not just going to do things like this, which is what makes me think that now they said this man has been employed, uh, has been working with uh, Mr. Pooch, what they say for 24 years, something like that. So 24 years ago, all right, he was a younger man, but he was still a senior. Okay. So I just wonder if he was at a place and he's fifth generation. So could it be that, you know, it's so much, it's not really that important. Maybe, maybe I got so much. I'm really not concerned about it like that. I don't know. But if you're, you're concerned about it, 
then you are doing the proper vetting, right? The second thing that Ms. Aurora is going to tell the secured entrepreneurs is that you have got to be aware of what legal documents you are signing. You've got to understand your legal agreements. Okay. Now, a lot of it is legalese. We do know that. I, I made the example the other day about, uh, when, when we go to a closing, okay. And they put all these documents in your face, sign here, sign here, sign here. You haven't read any of the 100 pages. You have no idea what it's, what it says. And you did not bother to ask, okay, I'm going to need at least three business days to look over this with my legal advisor, my attorney. Okay. Whomever it is, I, I need to go figure this out before I agree to this, which is why they say you get a cooling off period. Okay. But this is after you have signed your life away. Then it's up to you to say, okay, let me take all these documents. I just signed sitting up here signing, you know, and then if I find that, oh, I don't agree with this. I, I can go back and cancel this whole thing. Cause I have cooled off. <laughs> what a farce you need to understand your legal agreements way before you get to some cooling off period. Okay. So that's the second thing. Understand your legal agreements, understand what it is that you are signing. And, and the way you're going to do that is you're actually going to read. I can't tell you how many people tell me, well, I, you know, I actually didn't read the documents that you sent over. I actually, I just signed it. You see, and that's what society has expected of people. You know, when you go to court, and, and, and they, they flash these papers before you when they want you to come back or whatever. They don't expect you to stand there and start reading that thing. And then, as a matter of fact, I've seen them rush people who tried to read it. Just sign your name. I don't know what I'm signing to. Okay, sir, I will have the bailiff uh, arrest you here in this court if you don't hurry this thing. I have seen this for myself. Okay, so you've got to read these legal agreements, understand and ask questions. What does this mean for me and my money over here, sir, ma'am? <laughs> okay. That's the second thing. Understand your legal agreements. The third thing that Miss Aurora would tell the secured entrepreneurs is that you've got to limit access and create boundaries. So if you have a wealth manager, that wealth manager has limited access to your accounts. And when you create these boundaries, these boundaries will be in writing. Okay. Because what you need and what the, what the wealth manager will understand that you need is to meet with him or her or them on a weekly basis. So every Friday, we're going to go over these records because before we get to Friday, I have already done the tracking. I have already uh, I've done the investigation in my account. I have already reviewed my account to know what's going on. Okay. And now when I have questions or I need to talk to you, or I just need to make sure that what I'm seeing and what's been going on matches with what you're seeing and what you feel has been going on. We're going to talk about that on Fridays. Okay. And why can you do that? Because these people are being paid. These people are being paid to work for you. Okay. That's, that's the bottom line. So you have to let them know what your boundaries are. You will not have full control over this account. You will not write a check. You will not have access to this account to write a check or to do a transaction. Whatever transactions you think need to be done will be told to me first. And then, then I am allowed to say yay or nay. If you don't have those type of clear boundaries with your wealth advisor or your wealth management, then you're asking to have this sort of an issue. You're asking to have this sort of an issue because you have not taken control over your own money. You are not paying attention to what is happening in the bank. Okay. And then also part of the agreement is when it is that the wealth manager sees anything that they would deem to be suspicious or something that they know that they didn't talk to you about first, they didn't authorize it. They are to contact you immediately to let you know that this thing has gone on or to even ask you, were you aware of it or did you do it? Okay. Like you gotta have that type of relationship with anybody who is managing your money. And so the fourth thing, 
again, regularly monitor your account. Okay. It is up to you. And this is why the judge told Mr. Pooch that, you know, he blindly trusted this wealth manager because it is up to you to regularly check your accounts. And we're talking when you open up your right eye to the world. Okay. <clears throat> If you're grabbing your phone, if you're on your computer, you know, I'm, you know, everybody knows Mr. Moore is kind of the computer type. I'm more, I'm not interested in trying to do anything from this phone like that. You know, it's too small for Mr. Moore. I want to see it on the computer. Okay. I like to print it out. <laughs> like no, no joke. I'm the person that will still go to MapQuest, get my directions wherever it is I'm going, print it out carry it with me, even though I'm going to have the thing on the phone. I'm, I'm one of those people. I want, I want to, I want the paper. I want to see it. I may have to write something on it just the same way, you know, that Mr. Rory has to have a book. I'm not interested in a PDF. I need to print this thing out. I need to write on it. I need the hard cover, you know, things like that. You have to regularly check your account. Okay. And then like I'm saying, if you are seeing anything that does not make sense to you, you have got to now contact, have the ability to contact the wealth manager immediately. Oh, you're not available. I'll leave a message and I'm going to give you 24 hours because there may be something that we need to rectify before it's too late. I need an explanation so that I can make a decision as to whether or not you need to stay or you need to go because there has to be an investigation long before I decide okay, I need to file a lawsuit against you because $13 billion has come up missing. So let's just think about how long could it have possibly taken for $13 billion to mysteriously disappear because it was made clear that this man worked for Mr. Pooch for 24 years, $13 billion. Comment below, secured entrepreneurs, let Ms. Aurora know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the fifth thing that is very popular and needed is that you would need to hire an independent auditor from time to time. I believe that it is definitely necessary when you have big funds like this fifth generation Hermes Air. You need an independent auditor to look over your accounts to let you know if there's any activity that would be deemed suspicious, that is unorthodox, that is something that is abnormal to the regular events of the account. Okay, there's gonna be things that will stick out even in your own account the way it is now. You know, you automatically know uh, that that's not anything that I would buy. I know I didn't go to that place. Like, what is this? Like you already know. Okay. So when you're handling large amounts of currency like this, you definitely will need an independent auditor to have to add an extra layer of protection to your accounts. Because once again, you are not leaning on your wealth manager solely. This is a team effort. We are a group. Okay. And we are in this thing together because my finances are in this financial institution. In order for me to make money on my finances, I can't keep them under my mattress at the house or houses. I can't do it. I got to have compound interest in my life. The other thing, I think this is the sixth thing. You know, Mr. Roar loses track, but you've got to diversify control over your assets. And that means that you're not going to have all of your assets in one financial institution. Okay. You may have about four or five institutions that work well for you. Okay. You like that. Maybe they don't have any fees or maybe they have low fees, little to none or zero fees. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you like the philosophy of the financial institution. Maybe you appreciate some of the financial products that the financial institution has to offer you. But either way, 
you are diversifying the control because maybe you've got, you've got, and I'm talking financial institutions, not in the same country, you know, you know, you may have, you, you know, okay, we'll use United States. You've got a financial institution here in the United States. You got a financial institution there in Switzerland. You got a financial institution in the Middle East. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you are diversifying the control and you are in places where it's easy for you to communicate with the representatives that are handling your finances at these financial institutions. And that's very uh, important because we have, we have had some clients here that were under some people who advised them to go to a certain place. But as we know, cause we know, we know this, when we call places and this is not to offend anyone. Okay. We're all adults on this channel, but we all know that here in the United States, if you call for customer service, you more than likely are going to get somebody in maybe the Philippines, maybe Cambodia, maybe India. And the, the accent is so thick. It is very hard. It is very hard to communicate. You know, uh, one time I had to call up Amazon and I think it was, it, it, I think they weren't at somebody was African. It was a couple of African people. And I was like, now the accent was so thick, uh, that it was very hard. And the lady just said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to send you an email. I said, please do, because I don't even understand what you're saying, ma'am. <laughs> okay. So that's another thing that when it is you are on this level, you've got to be in places where it's easy for you to communicate with the representatives at the financial institutions. You don't want to, you don't want to take, you know, you don't want to be ill-advised by people who they're not really, they don't really have an interest in what's best for you. This is something that probably is helping to line their own pocket. So you want to consistently be aware of that. So diversifying the control as it relates to your monies and the people who can manage the monies and the places. All right. You, you, that's another layer of protection for you. And then again, same rules would apply. You would be meeting with these wealth advisors, these wealth managers on a consistent basis, you will have access to these individuals when it is you are going over your own books. Okay. And if you find that something doesn't look right, you have the ability to connect with these individuals and discuss these things immediately. And then the last thing Mr. Rora would say, and I think this is seven, I said five or six, but we ended up on seven because I have to say this, you have got to educate yourself. You cannot, and I tell clients this all the time, all of the secure entrepreneurs know, first of all, learn how to keep your own books. All of this. Oh, I have a bookkeeper. Oh, I have an accountant. Oh, I have a CPA. See that, that people think that that it sounds sexy. So that sounds sexy to people. And then you hear all these celebrity people come out. And wealthy people come out and say, oh no, I was robbed by my accountant. Oh no, my CPA robbed me for seven years. I didn't even know it. See, and, and Mr. Pooch is telling us that he'd been with this man for 24 years and $13 billion mysteriously got up and, and left. Okay. So if you don't educate yourself, if you don't learn how to keep the books for yourself at the very beginning, it's going to be that much harder when it is you are banking in financial institutions where your money is now earning money. Okay. You've got to be able to keep up with all of these things. You've got to learn all of these things. So I would say if you need to take an online accounting course, okay. An online bookkeeping course, whatever it is. And then on, like I'm telling you, most importantly, you have got to understand what these contracts you are signing mean, what, I mean, I'm talking the entire contract because some of these contracts are between 10 and 20 pages just to get the account open. And I know most of the secured entrepreneurs know what Mr. Rory is saying. It's like, and then they give you a, a, a folder with all these papers in it. You know, it's not a one pager. Okay. What does all of this mean to me? So when I come in today, I'm not coming in today to, to do, do, to do business with you. I'm coming in today to get the documents that I need so that I can read about what it is you're going to have me signing while my money is in here and what's going to be going on in here. Then I'll make, then I'll make an informed decision. That's how that should go. 
right? Or you ask for those documents, you know, to be emailed to you because we're not in a time where you got to walk in anymore. You need to send a representative. And if, hey, look, can we get an email of, of, of all the things that we will be asked to sign for an account? And sometimes they'll be like, well, you know, those are not printed until we actually begin to open the account. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll try to play you like that. Then you have to take another route. Like you, I'm, I'm telling you, you have to be aware of the tricks that really go on in these financial institutions. And that's one of the things that I remember Susie Orman talked about once where she was working for one of these financial institutions as a broker. And she found out that they were doing the wrong thing by people just because she started reading all the legalese. And she found that they were actually robbing people. They were mistreating, they were mishandling people financially. And I believe she helped some people do something about it. I mean, you know, it, it takes a person like that. It takes people like that to be like, now, why are we doing this to this person? Now, does this person really understand that this is what's happening to them? Well, this is where all the money's going. No wonder they ain't got no money. What kind of nonsense is this? Like she was that person, okay? So you have to be that person for yourself, all right? That's what Mr. Aurora wants to share in this video. You already know that we got the sole proprietor, the CEO program going on. Go down in the description below, okay? And you already know. You can find me, Miss Aurora Day, at AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time, ta-ta.